This is Mike Tyson when he was just at his f***ing most destructive best. Tyson just destroyed Marvis Fraser in the most violent fight I had sure. ever seen at a boxing yeah. match. And I thought to myself back then, I was like, if there's one person that would be the most terrifying person yeah. to be encountered with, yeah. it would be Mike Tyson. Like, to, that as it's ever yeah, lived. Because yeah. in my opinion, this was the scariest I've ever seen a human being be in my life. Tyson just stepped to him and just started f blasting him. Got him in this corner right here. And this is the end right here. Wah, bing, 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 bing. That's all before he can fall down. Yeah. He's already unconscious. Yeah. Tyson hits him four times more before he even gets to the ground. Sure. It was like an assassination. Mike Tyson had made a shocking announcement ahead of his fight with Jake Paul, as he plans to take some time off from his other ventures and just focus on the training for the upcoming bout. Mike Tyson bids farewell to his podcast hotboxing with Mike Tyson in a heartfelt video message to his Instagram followers. Tyson expressed gratitude for the experiences and connections made through hotboxing, signaling a new chapter in his life as he focuses on training for the upcoming fight with Jake Paul. Ladies and gentlemen, these are my final recordings of Hot Boxing. I really enjoyed being a part of this journey and all the people that I met, the remarkable people that I met and interviewed. And by now, for me, this is my next chapter in life. Please enjoy the following socials at Mike Tyson and MikeTyson.com for my next venture, please. I love you all. This dedication shows that Mike is taking this fight seriously and wants to win at every cost. He has been training almost every day despite his old age. This level of commitment definitely gives a factor of excitement to the people, and Tyson Fury is one of them. Fury believes that the Tyson-Paul fight is fantastic for boxing, and everyone should enjoy it rather than criticize it. Listen, from being a kid on the Disney Channel to fighting Mike Tyson, who wouldn't want to do that? You know, you've got a legend in Mike Tyson, you've got a, a YouTube boxer who's come into the game and blew it up, and you know, I think it's fantastic for boxing. I just don't know what's not to like. Oh, okay, the guy's 57 years old, but he's a former undisputed world heavyweight king. And listen, who am I to say, oh, Mike Tyson shouldn't be boxing, or Jay Paul shouldn't be boxing? you got to admire them both, and I wish them both the best of luck. Former WWE champion Rob Van Dam also believes that this fight is super intriguing. He thinks the way that people have split opinion on this fight is what makes it special. RVD stated, the whole concept is intriguing and exciting. The feedback has really pulled me into it because it's almost like politics, where the people seem so split and everyone is so positive that they're right. I've seen so many comments about, man, he's going to fight a 60-year-old man? Wait, he's saying he wants to be a serious boxer and he's going after a retired 60-year-old? No one's going to take him seriously. Come on, dude. And there's the other ones like, nah, Tyson is going to hurt him no matter what. That's Mike Tyson, both sides. Like I said, just like politics. UFC middleweight fighter Bo Nickel didn't believe the fight when it was first announced. He thinks that the fact this fight is going to be on Netflix is crazy and will generate tons of cash for the both fighters. I thought it was a joke at first, and then I was like, oh, frick, that's literally the craziest thing ever. Unbelievable. I'm interested to hear glove size. <laughs> Getting hit with a 16 ounce glove versus like an eight or 10 ounce glove is not even close to the same. I just can't believe that it's on Netflix. That's, I that's think, dope. the craziest yeah. part of it all. Yeah, I, I love that. They're getting a bag to do that. Yeah, Netflix is going crazy, though. They're going to take over sports. I wouldn't be surprised if after the ESPN deal that UFC went to Netflix. Could for sure happen. They just got stupid money, bro. They're, they're they dumb. have unlimited money. They have unlimited money. It's true. However, Andrew Tate has previously stated that no amount of money can lure him in to fight an old Mike Tyson. Would you fight Mike Tyson? Again, no, because he's now old. Fighting Mike Tyson is such an honor, and to step in there with a legend means the world to me. It's the biggest moment of my career. It would be an absolutely tragic shame to knock out an old version of his prime self. That doesn't feel fair. Prime Tyson would have ripped me apart in a boxing match. He would have beaten me, so to beat him when he's past his prime just feels dishonorable. So there's no amount of money on the planet that could convince me to fight Mike Tyson. As of right now, the boxing community was shocked to see Paul and Tyson face off in an amazing promotional film announcing their impending fight. The mood soured dramatically during their promotional photo shoot, with Paul candidly acknowledging that he felt uncomfortable taking on his opponent. Shaking his hand when we were at the shoot, this the strongest Like the probably the strongest handshake. You think it was intentional or I just... I don't know, I don't know, because it, it, I don't think he was like trying to squeeze. 
but you could just feel his like hands are like bricks. In a recent BS with Jake Paul podcast episode, Brandon Amato discussed how Paul and Tyson's relationship had changed during a recent shoot. He pointed out that although they had previously interacted amicably, there was a clear lack of friendliness this time around. The dynamic between you guys, that whole shoot, was that in the past you and Mike have been so friendly. Yeah. You weren't friendly the whole time. We were there for seven hours. There was no friendly laughing or giggling. He was like, it was like a different mode that he yeah, was using. Yeah, it's weird. Oh, I don't know. Scary. It's weird. Like Jake Paul answered, recognizing that their connection had changed. He clarified that entering into the fight contract changed their dynamic by bringing in a rivalry to their interactions. Paul insisted that he still loved and respected Tyson despite this shift saying that he felt privileged to be facing him, but he emphasized that they were in a competitive condition because of their impending fight, which naturally affected how they interacted with each other. Contract? Something changes, right? Like, even if we want to feel that, it's still like, yo, we are facing off. So like, obviously I love him, respect him so much. I'm, I'm honored to be going into the ring with him, but bro, we're fighting each other like so then there's also the connection between Tyson and Paul has long been one of mutual appreciation with their banter frequently hinting at a highly awaited fight that is driven by the enormous commercial potential it possesses however the importance of these next summer bouts cannot be overstated because competitors may follow professional fighting rules by touching gloves Paul mentioned this regarding his confrontation with Tyson let's see all the legends the myths because you're Iron Mike Tyson, but I have an iron chin. People know that, like, I, I take shots. So I think people are underestimating that me being able to deal with his power. In the past few years, Iron Mike has grappled with health challenges, sparking worries among certain fans regarding his endurance for the upcoming bout. Nevertheless, glimpses of Tyson's training sessions in preparation for the highly anticipated fight reveal that his formidable strength and agility remain a formidable challenge for Paul. In the same podcast, Jake Paul got a sneak peek at Tyson's freshest boxing workout footage. Recent training, I think, I think you should watch. I don't know if you've seen his recent training footage, but it's pretty absurd. I still think we're kind of grazing over his age. I think we should touch on that a little bit more, but this is him at 57. Yeah, this is what I watched before I made the parlay that he was knocking you out. Do so you have a parlay in? Wait, no, what the <laughs> fuck? The audible. Um, let me see this. As you can see, after watching the footage for a few seconds, Paul begins to formulate a response. His girlfriend, Yuta Leerdam, who was also starring on the podcast, then asked him, what if Tyson knocks him out? Knocks you out? Ooh. <laughs> um, <laughs> he sounds nervous. Just look away. <laughs> no, like, that, that will not be good. Babe. No, just look away. Okay, but he also just trained Francis Ngannou, who just got his head smashed off so I, I actually now that i think about it i'm about to see if i can get a cash out on this parlay wild knocker did you have later in the episode when the possibility of jake paul getting knocked out by mike tyson was mentioned paul dismissed the concern expressing confidence in his own abilities he attributed his sharpness and speed as key factors that would prevent such an outcome paul also highlighted his consistent activity and experience in the boxing arena over the years claiming that this has helped to eliminate any nerves before a fight yeah, no, I just, I'm too sharp and fast. <laughs> That's it? Nothing That's like personal, it. no spiritual. Oh, I mean, I'm just, yeah, like, I think just being active and, like, being the man in the arena for years and years now, like, uh, like I don't even get nervous. Like, I, the nerves are not even there anymore. Like, yeah, but it hasn't been the man in the arena. It's been the man. Paul suggested that, for him, fighting in an arena feels more intimate and personal, which in turn makes the experience less intimidating. Paul concluded by downplaying the significance of the stadium setting for their upcoming match, implying that he does not expect it to add any undue pressure or challenge. It's been the man in the arena, but not the man in the stadium. So well, I guess it's the same different... shit. I think an arena, it can feel more intimate and personal. This is gonna be like, it's not even gonna be, feel as crazy, I don't think. Better picks is the sim. UFC star Henry Sejudo has put forward estimates on what he thinks Mike Tyson will earn for accepting this fight. Henry stated, it's clear that there's a significant payday for Mike. He's probably going to rake in close to $20 million, and he's about to turn 58 years old. Jake is 27, and Mike is 57. But Bernard Hopkins criticizes Mike Tyson for taking a fight for money, knowing that it might ruin his legacy. He's also not a big fan of the showdown. Bernard stated, I don't like it. I don't like it. 
I look at Mike. I look at him differently in a way of my era. Like people looked at Ali, and I looked at Ali differently too. Marvin Hagler, Sugar Ray Robinson. I don't like it. I think it's becoming more of a sideshow with some sweat and maybe some blood, if we're lucky. I won't watch it. I could watch two turtles race and be more excited. It's because of how I look at Mike Tyson. I've shared not only the ring with Mike Tyson a few times, but the era, a little tip of the era. I just think it degrades him. You're getting $100 million, $200 million. Please, okay. Dylan Danis was asked about the upcoming Nate Diaz versus Jorge Masvidal fight when he compared it with the Tyson-Paul fight and called both of them embarrassing. Uh, it's embarrassing. I think Masvidal beats him pretty handily. I think he's more athletic. I think Nate is kind of out of it. You know, he's CTE brain dead, but... Yeah, I don't know. I think it's bullshit. It's a money grab, just like the Tyson and Jake Paul shit. But... When asked this question, Dylan was present at the premiere of Conor McGregor's upcoming film Roadhouse. Talking of this, Conor himself has expressed his distaste for the Tyson-Paul fight early. Your thoughts on this uh, Mike Tyson and Jake Paul fight? Oh, jeez, I thought it's, it's, a bit, it's a bit strange. The interest is a low one. I don't know. I don't really, it, it, I don't understand it. I wish well for Mike. Connor saying the interest is low for the upcoming fight didn't sit well with Jake Paul. Jake fired back at Connor and assured everyone that his fight against Mike Tyson is going to be the biggest ever. Jake stated, Connor, you're saying that the interests are low for the fight, but the last fight you announced was a thousand articles written in a multiple day spam to people talking about your fight. In the same multiple day spam, there are 10,000 articles written about my fight with Mike. So, in my opinion, this fight is the biggest fight this world will ever see. When previously asked during a press conference, UFC President Dana White didn't approve of this fight. Mike Tyson has been announced a return to boxing. I know in the past you said you didn't want him to fight again, you tried to talk him out of fighting again. Have you spoken to him about this one? He gets mad when I do this, but Mike's 60, man. I, I don't know. What do you guys think about it? Who gives a shit what I think? It's not my fight. Um, I love Mike Tyson, you know, personally as a friend, and he's one of my favorite athletes of all time. Um, I don't know, let's let's see what he can go in there and put together a training camp and come in, and you know, I, I don't like to see guys fighting it. Uh, be a 31 year age difference during that fight, just, you know. You know, you guys know what I think of that stuff. That said, it is on Netflix, which is a new development, right? Them getting into live sports. Obviously, you have a TV deal coming up soon. I think that Netflix should have gotten into live sports Years ago, I think I think they're they're, uh, they're they're late to the game, but they are a force. They're now recently, Dana has spoken again regarding the fight, and his views haven't changed much. During the pound for pound with Kamaru and Henry podcast, Dana again highlighted the age difference between the two fighters. He stated, "I love Mike, and I hate talking about it because he always gets mad at me when I talk about this stuff. But when the fight happens, he'll be 58 years old." there will be a 31-year age difference between these two. Dana also jokingly poked Jake Paul to fight Clint Eastwood next. Jake Paul did fight a kid his age, Tommy Fury, and he lost. I just saw this thing on the internet yesterday, and I reposted it where it says if he beats Mike Tyson, he's going to fight Clint Eastwood next, who's 93 years old. Jake has previously stated that he wants to be taken seriously and get in the world title picture. However, Dana believes that Jake doesn't want to be taken seriously and just wants money out of his fights. Dana stated, he, Jake Paul, doesn't even want to be taken seriously. What Jake wants is, Jake wants to make money. The people that follow Jake Paul don't buy Jake Paul's fights. So Jake has to fight people who can actually sell pay-per-views. Oscar De La Hoya shares the same thought as he believes that even if this mega fight will be seen around the world, Jake Paul has to fight young competitive fighters in order to be taken seriously. However, Former UFC middleweight champion Sean Strickland wasn't too sweet when talking about this fight. He went berserk on Jake Paul and said if he met Jake in person, he might go to prison. It's bullshit, man. It's, uh, I mean, how old is Mike Tyson, 60? 57. 57. Jake Paul, you are a disgrace of a man. You are the epitome of weakness. You are the scum of the earth. The fact that you even have a platform or anything of that nature is a slight on society. You truly make me disgusted. And if I ever encounter you in real life, I hope that I just don't lose my shit and go to prison. Canelo Alvarez was also not very fond of this fight. During the press conference for his fight, Canelo was asked regarding Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul. Canelo simply said, oh, and started walking off. 
Canelo. Thank you, gentlemen. What about Jake Paul and Mike Tyson? Canelo. Thank you. What about Jake Paul and Mike Tyson? <laughs> this shows that Canelo doesn't hold high regards for this fight. The relationship between him and Mike also doesn't look very good. During the same conference when Canelo was told that Mike advised him to face David Benavidez instead of Jamie Munguia, Canelo mockingly stated, I'd respect his opinion if he was sober. Just like this, Teddy Atlas also questions the credibility of this fight. He believes that this fight might be scripted just like the WWE. Teddy stated, unless this is a WWE agreement, which I don't know that it is. I never said this before because I think all these fights are legitimate, and they are and have been, but this one makes me wonder. He believes that if there's not an agreement between the two, Jake might be making a mistake. I'm not questioning the integrity of Paul. In fact, I like his integrity. I like what I've seen in the guy. I'm just saying, if there was a time I would question it, this would be the time. I can't see unless Paul is that confident that Tyson is too old now and he's that good because Paul has been getting more confident and he does have a good right hand and does punch well with it and Tyson leads with left hooks. Maybe Paul thinks he can hit him with a right hand. I don't know. All I know is that this is the first time I've said, I wonder if there's an agreement because if there's no agreement, Paul might be making a mistake. He also believes that Mike still has that power and Jake might be at risk. I'm surprised Paul is taking this risk. Power doesn't disappear even when you're old. He's still got speed in the combinations. He's still got that style. But Chael Sonnen believes that this statement of power goes last is complete nonsense. He questions the pros who are throwing this statement around regarding Mike that he still has the power. Chael questions them and asks if they don't even believe that Jake could take one single punch. Mike Tyson hits him, it's over. What do you mean if he hits him, it's over? What do you mean? Jake just can't take a punch? I mean, Jake's never been to Anderson Silva hit him and he, he didn't go to like, what are you saying? That Jake cannot take a punch? Or are you saying that Mike's punches are just so good? Because Roy took them, lots and lots of them, and that was years ago. Jake Paul can't take one punch? Really? Power's the last thing to go. Really? Mike Tyson needs to get to Jake Paul, that's true. Mike Tyson's gonna need to grind for however long this fight is, and there's one detail we have to think about. There's a rumor today that they were gonna wear 18 ounce gloves and headgear. That is just simply fiction. That is not true. The main concern for many people regarding this fight is for Mike's age and health. They believe that getting in the ring at this age could be very dangerous for his well being. Their concerns seem valid as Mike was recently seen in a video where he could barely hoop off a platform after his training. But Mike's trainer, Rafael Cordero, believes that people shouldn't be concerned about Mike's health and safety, as the Iron Mike knows what he's doing. Rafael stated, I believe people don't have to be concerned about his health and safety. You're talking about a guy who was a two-time world champ, the guy that had 29 fights in two years. He knows how to fight. He's fought against the best guys in the world. When he steps inside the ring, he knows what to do. It's not something new for Mike, and this fight is no different. He works hard every single day to go there and try his best to knock Jake out from the beginning to the end. So what are your thoughts about this mega fight? Are you a fan, or do you think that this fight doesn't make any sense? Do let us know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and check out some of our other videos on the screen right now.